morning, fellow RC enthusiasts. This is your host, Tom Cogswell from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC, here for another quick hit tech tip tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to set up flaps on your aircraft. So what we have here is a DX6E, and everything I do here is pretty much synonymous with every DX transmitter. It also will apply to IX transmitters. The menus are essentially the same, just the layout might be a tiny bit different, and the look will be different because of the color touch screen. So, on the left here we have two servos. This one is representing our flap servo, and this one is representing our elevator servo, because you want to have some sort of elevator compensation when you're setting up your flaps. And then we have them plugged into port 3 for the elevator, and then port 6 for the flap. That's how it'll be set up out of the box when you set up a fresh model like I have here. So first off, I'm just gonna have it go over a couple of the, uh, the, the do's you wanna do with your, your flap servo. So if you're installing a flap servo into a model or you're building a model that needs flaps, set up your flap servo like you would any other servo essentially. You wanna attach the arm when it's at 90 degrees. So what I would do is go to our monitor screen and look at the AUGS1 channel, which is our channel six. Make sure it says zero at the top for the monitor, and then attach the arm to where it's at, basically as close to center, close to 90 degrees to the servo as possible. Same for your elevator servo. Uh, if this is a bind and fly model that you're trying to set up flaps on, then that should already be done for you, but just double check. Make sure it's at the mid position or the 90 degree to the servo. The next thing you're going to want to set up is a wing type. So we're going to click on here and we're going to go down to system setup. The one here nearly, nearly at the bottom. We'll go to yes. We're going to go to aircraft type. And by default, it's going to say wing normal and tail normal. The wing that we're going to want to choose for at least this particular setup, because we only have one flap servo, and let's assume we only have one aileron servo, is one aileron, one flap. Now this wing type will apply to if your plane has uh, two flap servos plugged into one channel with a Y harness. Same with ailerons plugged into a Y harness into channel two for ailerons. So just kind of keep that in mind. Normally most bind and fly models, ready to fly models are set up that way. Go back. Go back to the main screen. And one thing you'll notice at this point is that the D switch, which is normally assigned to AUGS1 out of the box, no longer is moving my flap switch. Elevator's still working. And then when we go over to the monitor, it'll say FLP at the bottom for flap. That's helpful. So now we can see the flap system menu. If you hadn't turned on one aileron, one flap, or a flap wing type, that menu wouldn't even appear. We'll click on that, and we see it says inhibit. That's the switch that we want to choose for the flap system. When we click on flap, D is normally the default, so it'll automatically appear here. Or if you want to choose another switch, you could flip the switch or select it as you desire. I'm just going to use the D switch because that's what I use and that's what most people would use. And you'll have these values here. You have a line for flap and a line for elevator. Position zero indicates the position on the switch. If you look at the switch, it'll have a zero, one, and two. High, mid, and low. So the switch is there. And then you have speed. We'll get to that in a minute. So, on a flap, normally, and this is in, I would say, 90% of the cases, the full flap, the full all the way up flap or no flap, would be that the flap is at a uh, is flat with the trailing edge of the wing, as indicated here. And then position one would be a mid flap, so your flaps will drop down about halfway. And then position two will be a full flap. If your servo set up correctly and the geometry is right, normally position one will be a positive 100%. Now, if you're setting up a bind and fly plane, a ready to fly plane, please do check the manual to make sure. If you're not, if you're just building a model, uh, 
what you're gonna wanna do is increase this number until the flap is level with the trailing edge of the wing. It may be at 100 if you get to this point and 100% is not putting it level with the wing, it's a little bit drooped down, then you'll wanna go down, go back, go to servo setup, and increase the travel on your flap. We don't need to do that here, but just so you know, if you're running into that, go here, go to this number, and increase that number. And you'll see my servo is actually moving as I increase that number because I'm increasing the travel on that servo. All right, so this will be our full up position. Now when we flip the switch down to the one position, the mid position, that'll be our mid flap, and it's gonna say 0%. And then our full down position, we'll hit that. And this one, you're gonna go down until maybe negative 100%. This is another part where you're gonna to wanna to check the manual for the kit that you're building or for the ready to fly, bond and fly model to see what it says that this value should be. Or if there's a measurement, sometimes you're gonna need a measurement and it'll tell you in millimeters or inches how far down the flap should go. And that's gonna be for position one and two for mid and landing flap, rather. But for demonstration's sake, we're going to set it to 100%, zero for mid, and negative 100% for that. And you'll see here on the uh, the monitor here that it is going from all the way up to mid, to all the way down. And then the elevator servo is there for elevator compensation. For the most part, when you flip your flaps down, the plane is actually going to want to balloon a little bit. And by that I mean the nose is gonna pitch up a little bit and it's gonna float and kind of gain altitude. To compensate for that pitch up behavior, you're gonna to want to put in some negative elevator or down elevator, which is gonna be this movement on the stick. So if you're, you're gonna actually need to put in a little bit of elevator to level it out. Most of the time that starts out at about 8% for mid flap, and then I go up to 15% for, for all the way down. Now that, that's really gonna be dependent on the, uh, the plane. So how fast you're flying to can have an, an effect on this and things like that. So this just helps with elevator compensation. You may need to be prepared to add in a little bit of elevator or even the opposite direction to keep it level. But this just kind of gets you started and makes the flap position a little easier to, to use. So I'm gonna do, let's just do 10% for demonstration's sake and then 20% for that. So you'll see when my flaps are all the way up, that's the position that my servos are in. When my flaps are in the mid position, they go there. And then when they're all the way down, they go there. And that's the basics with that. Now the speed here, that is used to slow down the servo when you flip the switch so that there is not a drastic change in attitude when you flip the switch. This is needed to help the plane from doing any kind of, like I said, drastic changes in the air and it helps with keeping it under control when you drop the flaps. So two seconds is always a good place to start. I think that works great for pretty much any model. And that's the basics for setting up flap. I do wanna do an added little tidbit, a little pro tip here, and that is to use flight modes. So if we go down to system setup, we click yes, we go to F mode setup, I'm gonna set this to the same switch as D, so my flap switch, and go back, and we're gonna to go to trim setup. And I'm gonna, so we have this line here that says common, or we can change it to F mode. So what that's doing is when I am in a different F mode, the elevator trim is gonna change. And that's helpful when, like we're, if we're tuning um, the flap compensation. So let's say we're in mid flap and the 10% elevator flap compensation isn't really working well for us. We can use the elevator trim to trim that for us. So if I need more, I can just add in some up elevator trim. And then when I flip the switch, and you'll see here, my trim will go back to zero. So the trim is actually independent to your flap switch or your flight mode switch. So you'll see zero is there. So this will be my normal flying uh, elevator. So if I'm trimming for normal flight with no flaps, flaps are up, this will be my trim for that. Then I'll flip, this will be my trim for when my flaps are at mid, and this will be my trim for when my flaps are all the way down. That's really handy, and I think it's great for tuning just on any other basic day, because 
your flaps may have a different characteristic depending on wind, wind speed, ground speed, air speed. I think it's really helpful and I think you guys should try it out. All right, and that's how you set up your flaps on a DX6E or pretty much any other DX radio using the Gen 2 Airware software. Hopefully this helped you guys out. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. We'll get to them. Or if you have suggestions for more quick hit tech tip videos, feel free to message us or leave them in the comments as well. Thank you for your time and happy flying. <laughs>